Welcome to the penultimate video for this section. It's on symbols and formulae. Most people when they think of chemistry don't think of writing out the chemical terms. They think of using a shorthand. O2 stands for oxygen. PB stands for lead. C8H10N4O2 can represent caffeine. You may even have seen quote sentences unquote written out like this all in subtype of chemical shorthand. What we're really using here are symbols. What's a symbol? A symbol is just something that stands for or represents something else. In chemistry, we use one or two letters as a symbol to represent the elements. Some of the symbols are going to make sense. Carbon is represented by C. Xenon, Ze. Fermium, Fm. Nitrogen, N. Those appear to correlate quite nicely to the names. On the other hand, some of the symbols seem not to make sense. Gold is AU. Sodium is NA. Lead is PB. Tungsten is W. But you know a little bit about the history of the periodic table, and you find out there's a reason for each symbol. Gold, AU. The Latin word for gold is aurum. Notice it starts with an AU. Sodium, the Latin name is natrium, Na. Lead, Pb, the Latin is plumbum. As a matter of fact, since pipes used to be made out of lead, the people who work on pipes are called plumbers because they worked on lead pipes. Tungsten, W, the German for tungsten is Wolfram, starts with a W. So there really is a method to the madness. How do you know what symbol to use for each element? That's easy. You look at the periodic table. It will tell you and you will always have access to a periodic table. If the symbol has one letter, that letter will always be capitalized. N is nitrogen, U for uranium, K potassium. If the symbol has two letters, only the first letter is capitalized and this is actually vital. Lithium is Li. Xenon, capital Z, small e. Iron, capital F, small e. Capital C, capital O is not cobalt. It's actually carbon monoxide. Cobalt is capital C, small o. So you can see that it can make a difference how you write these out. So now you know how to write the elements as symbols. Remember, you can always refer to your periodic table. When you stop connecting the element symbols to make a compound, that's called a formula. So a formula represents compounds. A formula, that's the plural, represent compounds. There are three parts to any formula. You must have the element symbols. Since compounds are made out of elements, you have to have the element symbols. You may have subscripts, but they're not required. You'll see why in a second. There may be parentheses, but not always, but the parentheses are a very distinct meaning. We only apply subscripts to the entity that is directly to the left of the subscript. For example, H2O, the two only applies to the hydrogen, and that tells us that we have two hydrogen and one oxygen in this molecule. Calcium sulfate, we see that there is one calcium, one sulfur, and four oxygen. Vitamin B12 has this formula which tells us that we have 63 carbon, 88 hydrogen, 1 cobalt, 14 nitrogen, 14 oxygen, and 1 phosphorus. And by now you should have noticed that any positive whole integer greater than 1 can be a subscript, but we never use 1 as a subscript. If there is no subscript, it's assumed that the subscript is 1. Now you also may have parentheses. This is a compound called barium phosphate. This tells us that there are three barium, two phosphorus, and eight oxygen. When you count the atoms, you distribute the two within the parentheses. However, when you write it, you are not allowed to distribute the two. The compound on the left is not the same as the compound on the right. In order for it to be barium phosphate, the two must be outside the parentheses. So with this quick review, you now know how to use symbols. 
You're not expected at this point to know how to put the symbols together to make compounds. You'll be given them, but eventually you will learn how to combine them based upon their names. The next chapter, or actually video, will be on chemical reactions, the basics, and chemical change.